Okay, so welcome to this next video in the Theory of Probability playlist. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to look at conditional expected values uh, for a continuous random variable. So conditional expected values, but this time where the random variable that we are taking the uh, conditional expected value of is a continuous random variable rather than a discrete random variable. So here's the setup. We have a probability space here. Uh, which has some random variable big X uh, which maps you onto the real line here and uh, this is going to be a continuous random variable meaning that uh, the image of this random variable if we look at all the points in this probability space all the real numbers uh, which the um, outcomes in this abstract probability space are mapped onto uh, that's going to be a con it's going to basically be an uncountably infinite set i.e. it's going to have the same cardinality as the continuum that's why it's called a continuous random variable so in this case we can't ascribe a probability mass function necessarily but instead what we can do is ascribe a probability density function to each uh, value little x is an element of the real line so we um, we uh, construct a probability density function for this random variable big X as a function of little x, where little x can take on any value within the real line. And it doesn't tell you the probability of getting that value little x, because that's just zero. It tells you the probability density, so that if you take that little point x and construct a small interval of length delta x, the probability of you getting within that interval is the probability density function multiplied by delta x. Uh, at least that converges on being true as delta delta x converges on uh, zero. Okay, uh, now what we want to do uh, is uh, we can calculate the expected value for this random variable big X. So we can calculate the expected value for big X and uh, we know how to do that. We take the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times the probability density function of big X evaluated at little x. And I want to make that clear that that's a big X there, not a little x. Uh, and you integrate it with respect to x. So the intuitive notion of what you're doing here is that you take the probability density function, you multiply it by a tiny little interval dx to turn it into a probability. So let's imagine letting this interval get absolutely tiny. That's what dx is. Uh, so some tiny little interval. That will tell you the probability that you're within that interval. Uh, what you then do is you multiply that interval by its uh, the value that it effectively represents, which is x. Because if you make dx so tiny, then the interval gets so close to just being x that you might as well call all the points in there, uh, say that they have the value x. And then you're basically summing that up over all values of x on the uh, real line uh, to get basically the sum of all of this up. And obviously it takes these infinitesimal probabilities, but it sums over an uncountably infinitely many uh, little x values, and that somehow spits you out a finite value. So that's the incredulity of calculus. Um, Anyway, uh, so that's the expected value, and now what we want to do is, uh, similar to in the case of discrete random variables, we want to say, what is the expected value of a random variable big X conditional on an event E having happened? So what this means is, uh, basically you have some subset of our original abstract probability space, which we will call the event E. So this is some event E, which is just a subset of your original probability space. And what we now want to do is uh, calculate the expected value of the random variable big X, uh, where you now view this E as being the whole probability space. So what you can imagine doing is pulling it out uh, so that you're just left with this E here. Here is E. And you can imagine now restricting the random variable big X onto the set E. So now you view E as your new probability space. You promote it up and use it as the whole probability space. You still have this random variable big X, which is ascribing to every outcome in, the, in this new probability space E. It's still ascribing real values. And um, what you're going to do, basically, is you're going to um, alter the probability at the the probability distribution, by the way, of this random variable big X, uh, where it's now restricted to this event, uh, to this new probability space E, uh, is not necessarily at all the same as the probability distribution of the random variable big X on the entire larger probability space. So, what the reason is that um, if you, 
the probability density function is effectively, uh, if you take the probability density function and multiply it by delta x, what you get is effectively the probability that you're within that interval. So let me highlight that in green. So that's what the probability density function on here means. Now, what is the probability that you're within that interval? Well, it's the probability of the inverse image of that interval. So let's say there's some green set uh, down here. In fact, I want to draw it so that it has at least some intersection with E. Okay, so this green set represents the pre-image of, of this green interval over here. So it represents all the outcomes in this abstract probability space that were mapped onto uh, a value within this green interval by the random variable big X. Okay, um, and basically, uh, when we uh, when we go over to using this set E as our entire probability space now, what's going to happen is that all the, this only, the only bit of this green interval that remains, sorry, this green set that remains anymore is the portion that overlaps with the set E. So this is the portion that's left over, and that corresponds now to the pre-image of this green interval under the random variable big X uh, acting on this set E, basically. Uh, so it's ch the set which you are taking the probability of has changed and obviously we know how to calculate the probability of that set given E. We can calculate the probability of that green set just by taking the probability of that uh, intersection piece, the bit that intersects, so uh, this bit here, we can take that probability in the larger probability space and uh, the probability of that intersection, the bit that actually of the green set that overlaps with E, you can take it in the larger probability space and then all you have to do basically is scale up that probability to make it a conditional probability. So we know how to take the probability of this, um, what should I call it, um, I'll say just green set. So the probability of this, given that the event E occurs, so given E occurs, is equal to the probability of this green event intersect E in the old probability space. So remember what this, this symbol here means. This means the probability of the green event given that you now view E as the whole probability space. So it means probabilities in this new probability space over here. This means the probability uh, where you have no conditional on E symbol there. That just means the probability in the old probability space. So it says take this green set, intersect it with E, that's this black bit here, this bit here, um, find that probability of that black bit in the whole probability space, work out whatever that is. Now, that is not going to be the probability of this little intersection bit in this uh, probability space of E, because that will ascribe the probability in this larger set. We now need to take account of the fact that we're not asking what's its probability compared to the whole set. We now basically need to take its probability relative to E being viewed as the whole probability space. So we need to bump it up, basically. And the way we do that is by dividing through by the probability of E. OK, so that's how you formulate conditional probabilities. So uh, with that in mind, uh, now let's uh, remember that the way we found these was with probability density functions. So the probability of this green set uh, was fx evaluated, f big x evaluated at little x, basically. Um, so uh, what we now want is the intersection of that with this uh, set E, basically.